of the recent past we've been answering big questions on life signatures radio concerning failure concerning productivity one of the biggest questions we asked was whom do you consider to be the biggest failure ever and that was covered in the prior series where we were talking about a comeback and so on and so forth and in this series that we're talking about hell we're asking whom do you consider to be your greatest enemy and we covered that in the previous episode where we discussed that such and such are the things that your enemy will want to do against you and in the podcast we are talking about if you had a glimpse of what your arch enemy your arch rival will be doing in terms of discussing your downfall what are some of the arsenals that they are going to apply to you and we say that they are not going to be obvious they are going to be stealth secret and obvious things that's what we're covering again today stay tuned Welcome to the Life Signatures podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Elon Musk came out the other day I think maybe not the other day it's just that I saw that tweet and I saw that message he's saying that the era of fighter jet pilots is going to come to an end the era of someone climbing onto this F whatever fighter jets and scrambling off to a distant location to bomb people down it is going to be obsolete in fact it is obsolete even as we speak The other day there was a serious controversy in the United States of America when Donald Trump took out a guy called Soleimani by an air strike that was conducted by a drone. There was no fighter jet there. There was no human being there. It was a remote connection that brought the man down. My point is simple in belaboring that. It is to tell you that increasingly your enemies are not going to be obvious. Increasingly by the way if you watch these spy movies and and so on you find that a spy has been in the system someone let's just use an example of American Russia a Russian spy goes to the Americas when he is a child and grows up in the system even becomes quote unquote a vice president but he is not working for America is working for Russia That is how warfare is being done in this day and in this age. It is not upfront, it is not direct, it is not something you see. It is something you do not see. It's intelligence, it is stealth. And if it comes to productivity because we discuss and we say that one of the biggest arsenals, one of the biggest reasons as to why you and I are existing, it is because we are supposed to be working, we're supposed to be productive, we're supposed to contribute, we're supposed to impact, influence, supposed to do things, supposed to be creative, supposed to bring our uniqueness on the face of the earth, supposed to shine our light, supposed to activate our potential and cultivate it to the fullest. That is the reason as to why we're existing. There is no bigger, greater reason apart from that. The others are subservient. And people will tell you that the re- biggest reason as to why we're existing is so that we can worship God. It is true. But we do that through the productivity. We don't put worship on one side and productivity on the other. They go hand in hand. There was not a church at the beginning. There was not prayer at the beginning. Those things came after the fall. Anyway, I'm not going to become religious here, but I'm saying this, when it comes to warfare, when it comes to modern war, 
when it comes to me wanting to take you out these days i am going to use something that will the element of surprise is something that is becoming increasingly great a tool to use a small enemy that doesn't have enough arsenals can take away a big one just by using stealth technology just by using the element of surprise and your greatest enemy my friend your greatest enemy if you want to know who your greatest enemy is Go back to the previous episode we discussed that in length the previous two episodes your greatest enemy will take you out very fast through stealth technology they will take you out very fast through something you don't see so those little things and we were talking about you as a human being and becoming productive and hell we quote unquote hell projecting itself as the biggest enemy of your success wanting to stifle you wanting to take you out their biggest agenda is that you will not be fulfilled you not be productive and that you'll be taken out and that you'll not do that which you were called to do in the first place and so there are these big time weapons that we have i mean you know them from far the en- the weapons of affront i mean bombs nuclear bombs and all those things they are there but there are the silent weapons that are being used kind of like betrayal kind of like espionage kind of like stealing secrets you know those things are big time weapons that are being used and when you come back to yourself the weapons of your destruction the weapons of your productivity the weapons against your productivity we know them already we know things like laziness we know things like lack of moral compass we know things like lack of focus and, and so on we know all those things that are there and we have fought against them strongly but then there are those ones that we are experiencing on a daily basis and if we're not careful they can easily take us out those are the stealth weapons that the enemy your enemy is using to bring you down they are not as wicked so to speak as let's say adultery or fornication or stealing or killing or raping no they are those day to day stealth weapons that the enemy is using and yesterday in the podcast we discussed the first one and we say that the first weapon that they are going to use against you it is the weapon of broken focus broken focus as in you start have you ever seen someone starting very many things in one year they want to sell this they want to do this they want to do this they start 3 months down the line they stop and then they go and start something else 3 months down the line one week down the line they have stopped and then they hear there is this shiny object that has come to town the latest fad of investment that has just arrived in town they drop everything they are doing take out all their investments and all their savings and go and pour it into that thing they lose the money and then they start afresh and so on broken focus it is such a very powerful for weapon that can be used against you or against any other visionary out there if i wanted you to be destabilized if i wanted you to lose your productivity lose your age and lose your momentum and lose your anchor i'll just break your focus i'll just do something that breaks your focus and all along you've been doing so well and i'm bringing something that just distracts you and that's a stealth weapon that I can be able to use against you and it's being used on a daily basis daily basis stealthily and you cannot even know that is happening unless you've listened to this and now you're on the lookout you become very much informed and very much knowledgeable now you're on the lookout and you know that I've got to stay focused and I've got to stay with this thing that is mine unless something distracts you the second weapon that we're going to discuss today is inconsistency and it's just related to the focus we talked about see consistency is one of the biggest weapons you can have in your life and if i wanted to take you out in one way or another i will make you inconsistent i will make sure that yes you can stay focused maybe your broken focus is intact maybe you're not you're no longer having a problem with broken focus but you're focused 
but then I will make sure that in your focus you are not consistent. You are doing one thing and then there is a huge interval between the next action that you are doing on the same thing. And in the process, something that was supposed to be finished in a year, it is finished in six years, in seven years, in a decade. And by the time it's finished, the, I mean the momentum is so low, so slow. Let me tell you, speed is absolutely critical in productivity and in production. And so if I can make sure that there is inconsistency in your life, I would have easily taken you out. I saw a meme this morning saying, someone saying that I normally sleep and I wake up and every single day I'm doing sit-ups, maybe at least two sit-ups every day. But the problem is I cannot show any effort, any effect in my body out of it. What is this person having? He's doing the sit-ups. Yes, it's true. And I know, and I know it's a joke, but you see there's a problem. There's a big, big, big gap between the first action and the next action at a gap of 12 hours. If you could do those sit-ups in a gap of seconds consistently, guess what it will result to? So it is absolutely powerful, this weapon of inconsistency. Bruce Lee told us, I'm not afraid of an athlete or a boxer or a fighter who practices 10,000 kicks once, but I'm afraid of the guy who practices one kick 10,000 times. That is the power of consistency. And if I can find a way to make sure that you are not consistent, I will have slowed you down. I will have taken you out. I will have maybe opened you up so that you can be distracted by other things altogether. You see, the message of consistency is smack in the middle with the message of purpose. You are born for a reason and for a purpose. And the call is to stick to that reason, that purpose. That's why in scriptures, David is a king. He is not a psalmist and, and so on. He is not a, a, a priest. He is a king. He is sticking to what he was called to do. Moses is a deliverer. He is sticking to what he was called to do. Joseph is a businessman and a deliverer. He is sticking to what he was called to do. You don't find him doing other things at will. Of course, sometimes environment forces you to do some stuff. David is forced to, you know, play the harp and, and so on and so forth. He is forced to run away and fight for another king because of the circumstances. But at the end of the day, your greatest call in life is to be true to who you are. We are told that there are two major things of success. Number one is self-awareness, knowing who you are. And number two is authenticity, staying true to who you are, to who your calling is. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest things you will not find on the face of the earth is authenticity. People are not true to themselves. People are not true to their calling. People are not true to who they were formed to be. People have great calls upon their lives, great needs. This world is waiting for them to manifest. But people are not manifesting because of inconsistency. They are not consistent in the way they were supposed to be. Let me tell you, consistency is not something you do for weeks, not for months, not even for years. It is something that you do for decades because you are called for not very many things. If you cannot be distracted by another big project, then hell has cropped up one of the weapons that it uses to ruin you, to run rings around you. And the major motive here is to kill your passion and inspiration and create an aura of apathy around you. Passion normally, let me tell you, passion normally is not something that you wait on so that you can start. Passion comes because you started. I mean, you get passionate and you get motivated and inspired because you started. It burned wagons on you because you started. It doesn't wait for you to, I mean, you don't wait for passion so that you get started. You get started and then passion burned wagons upon you and you need to be passionate in order to fulfill your potential you need to be motivated you need to be in motion you need to be consistent and we talked about the consecutive things if we can find a way that you are not consecutive in your activities if you find in your calendar you're supposed to be consecutively doing something from monday to sunday 
And on Monday you don't do it, on Tuesday you don't do it, on Wednesday you don't do it consecutively. See, at times you can be able to do it in a broken, con- discontiguous way. In that on Monday you don't do it, on Tuesday you do, Wednesday you do, Thursday you do, Friday you don't do. That is okay. But consecutively is very dangerous when you are doing something you're not supposed to be doing, when doing something that you're supposed to be consistent with, and you're not doing it. Let me tell you, your consistency is broken. And once that consistency is broken, apathy sets in. When apathy sets in, it is easy to be distracted. Sooner or later, you are not the person who is identified with that which you're supposed to be doing sooner or later you are not consistent with what you're supposed to have been doing in the first place you're doing something totally different or maybe you are not as passionate and as given to doing that which you're called to do on a daily or on a weekly or an occasional basis and what are you doing in between? What you're doing in between is probably just existing, just survive or just paying the bills. But if someone can cheat you, that your consistency does not pay. And that's one of the biggest, biggest things, biggest lies we have against consistency. I have been consistent with this podcasting. And for this is my second year in podcasting. I have not earned any dollar. I always pay $20 every month to this thing. And I'm hosting it and so on. And I spend my time to craft it. I've been consistent, yes. But I'm not seeing any payment coming out of it. And you are cheated out of it. And you stop. The question is, when you stop being consistent, what are you going to do in its place? What, are you going, what else are you going to do that is constructive? That is productive? That is something that maybe it doesn't give you money at the end of the day, at the end of the month, but it is something, it is constructive, it is work, it is productivity. What are you going to replace it with? That is a question you need to ask yourself. See, a good example is a Christian who is supposed to be praying. They know that they, one of the things that they are supposed to be doing to build themselves up is on a daily basis they are supposed to be praying and they are supposed to be reading and studying on a daily so if they find themselves on a consecutive basis they have not prayed two days they have not prayed and they have not read the bible guess what something has happened and they are falling behind the world doesn't stop waiting for you when you are inconsistent the world keeps moving God keeps moving and the reason as to why sometimes we're not successful is because we're not catching up. We have a lot to catch up because of our inconsistency. There's so much we haven't done. And so when we come back and we start being consistent, we have to do catch up first before we can start building up. That's why it takes long. And that's why this consistency business, it is absolutely critical on a daily basis to make sure that no meeting is missed. I mean, no plan is curtailed, is foiled. But that's exactly what the devil wants. That's exactly what hell and its kitchen cabinet want. They want you to miss this and want you to miss. And it can be a tiny, so tiny that it is easy for you to give an excuse and say it's just a meeting. It's just one day in a week. I mean, I'm just eating chocolate once. I mean, I'm just eating pork once. I mean, I'm just taking one drink. I mean, it's just one flirtation, one text message. No big deal. Exactly. That small thing that you're giving an excuse of, the only thing that it needs to happen is that it becomes consecutive. Once it becomes consecutive, I'm telling you, you're in the danger zone and you can easily be taken out. The moment you postpone something, you've actually given hell more ammunition against you. Given them more time to think of something else that can distract you. If hell can interrupt your cycle for two consecutive times, they have won. All they need to do is just to tip the scale and you're gone. So what do you do? You need to be on the lookout. You need to be an ardent planner like we said yesterday. Who knows the importance of urgency? I cannot begin to talk about urgency and how important it is for us to be urgent on a, on a daily basis. By the way, did you know if I wanted to distract you, I would use urges? kind of urgency and urges are related but they're totally on a different spectrum you don't need urges you need urgency but i'm belaboring that the extreme militation being an extreme militant for your time 
is what is going to keep you to be consistent and you will not have interruptions coming. Of course, interruptions will come, but you'll know how to deal with them. One of my mentors, Mike Maddock, has designed a way that he knows how many dollars he is worth per hour. So if he's scheduling a meeting with you for 30 minutes, you better bring value to those 30 minutes. I know it's extreme, but it gives him some way of making sure that he is consistent and he's urgent with his schedules and with his time. So the second thing that the devil, I mean, the second thing that the hell will want to do so that you're not successful is to make sure that you're not consistent. Tomorrow we're going to chip in one more. Until then, bye-bye. Two, three. A special shout out to my mentor, Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.